Alrighty folks, so I'm going to walk through how we can get set up with uploading videos to YouTube with NAN and it can be a little bit tricky if you're self-hosting this or you've got it on a VPS because I'm just going to run this and you'll see what, what issue we, we get and I'm going to show how you resolve that. It's fairly straightforward. I'll also go through how you get your credentials set up to use the YouTube node that's part of NAN. And then I'll go on and show a demo of how we upload videos from the NCA Toolkit. If you've seen any of, the, any of my other videos, you'll know that we use the NCA Toolkit a lot. Because uh, it saves a lot of money on uh, external APIs. But it comes with a challenge when it comes to uploading and videos or the results to YouTube. But I'll go through all that. So if I just run this, this is just a standard Google Drive node here. It's going to download a file that I've got in my Google Drive. And then it's going to attempt to upload it via YouTube. Nothing special going on here. Just got a standard title, region code. It's going to upload the binary data that's come from the previous node, which is in this case Google Drive. Just give it some generic description here, and I've set the privacy to state uh, the privacy status to private because these are just tests. And you can see this is the issue we get, right? We get this error code 400. There's nothing wrong with the video. That That's fine, right? It's playing. There shouldn't be an issue there. Now, the reason this happens is when you deploy NAN, I'm just going to pull up a document here. When you deploy NAN and you look on their website, it will just give you a very simple Docker command. Uh, there is a lot of extra things you can add to that. One of them being is this binary data mode. So this particular instance that I've got running here is been deployed with this command here. And now we're going to deploy a new instance. So I'm going to pull this one down, remove it, and then I'm going to redeploy it. And it's got this command in here. So this is set in the binary data mode to file system. By default, it's held in memory. And for some reason, that just doesn't work with YouTube. I don't know why, but we need to add this extra environmental variable here. Set the data mode to file system and then this will solve this problem now one thing to note here when it comes to setting up credentials you're going to need a callback url so you're going to need a url here right your local host is not going to work now i do have a video covering how you can set this up it's the tsl or the tls uh, cloudflare video it's super simple to set up so check that out and you'll know exactly what to put here for the webhook url if you're using DigitalOcean or something like that, you'll probably be given like a, a secure IP. So you can just put that in there. That is fine. So let me just copy this command here. I'll come over to Docker. I'm going to just delete this NAN instance. I'm going to come over to my PowerShell. I think I already deployed one there, but I'm going to do another one. Get that up and running. And if we come back over to Docker, you can see that's up and running. This will just take a second or two just to initially fire up. There we go. And you can see it's got my URL there. I'm still using a local URL, but I could just as easily use this one. It's just going to be a tad slower because it's going out to the internet and then coming back. So I'm still just using my local URL. That's absolutely fine. So that's up and running now if we run this module. And there we go, that's success. If we just look at this, we can see we get the uploaded ID back. And if we come over to YouTube and just do a little refresh here, you can see we've got the first one, even though that failed, it's still uploaded it. But this is just gonna sit there and say processing till the cows come home, so that's no good. So that was the first failed one. The one we've just done now is actually just been processed because it's shorter than three minutes, it's automatically gone into shorts. And now that is that is effectively live. It would be if it wasn't private, but it's there. It's on YouTube. This will play. And there you go. So that's how you solve that issue if you was getting that error 400. Not entirely clear what that error is. It's not very self-explanatory, but this command here fixes that. If you're on a net in cloud, this is probably not going to be an issue for you. Now let's go ahead and set up the credentials for YouTube because you might not know how to do that. But once you set them up for YouTube, it's the same process for when you want to add the Google Drive or the Google Calendars or the Gmail. You just add them as extra services. 
but you initially need to sort of do the the overall setup which we'll go through now so over in google land you want to just type in google google developer console and you'll be presented with a screen similar to this or it'll possibly ask you to create a project straight off the rip i've already got one but if i select this project i can select create project from here i'm going to do that so i'm going to create a new project i'm just going to leave the name as default click create that's going to do some stuff in the background there that's created i just click the cloud button here and then i'm going to select that project to go inside that project because at the moment i'm in my first project the one that's already made so i'm in there next thing you want to do is come over to apis and services and enable apis and services and this is where we add stuff that we want to allow nan or anything else to sort of use in our case we want to use the youtube api so i'm just going to type youtube there youtube data api v3 select that click enable and that API is now available for us to use. Now we do need to create some credentials. So if I come over to OAuth consent screen here, it's going to want me to create some auth platform. Let's click getting started on there. It's going to ask for a name. I'm just going to call it app name and call it whatever you want. It wants an email. I'm just going to select the one that's assigned to this account and click next. I'm going to select external here. Click next contact information. I'm going to be deleting this, so I'm just going to put a random email here that doesn't exist. And then I'm going to click next, and then I'm going to click finish here. And then create. So that's created that. So we want to come over to clients next. And then we want to create a client. And this is where we're going to create the, if we come over to NAN here. And we come over to YouTube. If I come to the credentials and click create new, we need to give it a client ID and a client secret. And this is where we get this right from clients and then we create a new application type. I'm just going to select web here, web application, authorized redirect URLs. Now if we come back to NAN, that's what this is here. Now this is going to need to be a domain name or a secured IP. If you're on DigitalOcean, you should just be able to copy that or if you're on the cloud version copy the one that it's given there if you're running this locally uh, or on a dedicated server you're going to need to set up your own domain name there again i do have a video on there that shows how to set that up it's, it's really straightforward but i've copied that url i'm going to click add URI here paste that in click create and this will give us our client ID and our client secret. So I'm going to copy the ID, come back over to NAN, paste that in there. I'm going to copy the client secret here, paste that into NAN, and then I'm going to click this sign in with Google. So this is just off my screen here. That's fine. I've just selected my account. And it's actually told me that it's uh, blocked here. And the reason being, is we did miss a little step here so i'm going to click ok and close this we can come back and grab these details we have set these up so we actually need to come over to audience here and just click publish app click confirm and then that's published now if we go back to nan and try and sign in again we've still got the same details in there so that should be fine this is just off screen here so once you select your account to sign in you're going to get this google hasn't verified this app click advanced and then click, uh, in my case, I'm going to put go to benkeating.online. It says unsafe. It is safe. Now we can select all here. So this is all the YouTube stuff. This is the API we enabled. I'm going to click continue. And then it says connection successful. So I'm going to close that now. And now that's YouTube account two. And if we just run this just for the sakes of it, just to make sure that they do work, it will because it's just told us it was successful. And you can see that's successful. So that pretty much gets you set up with the Google account. The same process applies with Gmail. Now, because you've already set up your project, if you did want to add a new Gmail account 
or Google Drive here. If I click create, it's the same deal. It wants a client ID, it wants a client secret. It's the same details as what we just put in. Now this wouldn't work off the rip if I come back to Google because we actually need to enable that as a service. So you'd come back over to APIs and services and you'd type in Google Drive. And there you go, Google Drive API. We just go into there. We'd enable that and then we come back in and put our client ID and our client secret from the last step. And then it will ask you to sign into Google again and go through all of that. And you can do that with any Google service up with calendars or the, the emails, whichever you want. So that pretty much covers that. Now, if you use the NCA toolkit, then you want to stick around for this, this part. If you don't use the NCA toolkit, then this is not really going to be relevant to you. And that's pretty much the end of the video. Thanks for watching all that good stuff. So with the NCA toolkit, and if you are unfamiliar what this is, I have videos on how to set this up. This is what we use to convert videos and turn images into videos and do a bunch of FFmpeg stuff. And what it will do is it will do that. And in our case, it will send it to some S3 storage. I'm using Mini IO locally. But one of the issues with that, and I'll show you what happens. This here is just a simple call to the NCA and it's transform video. This is just going to take an image. And it's just going to turn it into a 15 second video with a frame rate of 25 and a simple zoom. Nothing too fancy going on there. But this is just a way for us to just quickly get a, a little test video here. So I'll let that do its thing. It shouldn't take too long because it's such a short little video here. So that will return back a response and a URL here. So this is uploaded to our local storage, which is mini IO. We've got a HTTP download node here. So I'm going to take that response, download it. And then this comes back as a, a binary file. Now you would just think, okay, we'll just stick a YouTube node at the end of this and see what happens. In fact, let's, let's do that and see what happens. If I just copy this node. And then we try to upload this to YouTube. We're going to get an issue here. Media type, binary, octet. Optic stream is not supported. Okay. So we can add this little code node. And I'm going to put this, obviously, this little... <clears throat> I'm going to put this workflow in a description. So you can see this, right? This is just two lines of code. And all it's doing is it's taking the file and converting the... Uh, ME or MIME type to video MP4 because that's what it is and then it's just going to return that so if we just put that in click OK and then that's returned that now with the correct ME MIME type I, I think that's how you say that I always they always throws me off now this you could just say okay well we're now we've converted that now we can upload this to YouTube so let's try that and that's still failed which is annoying uh, so what do we do at this point? So this is where it gets a bit weird. Now we have to just upload that back to the storage and override the original file. But what it will do is it will override it with the correct MIME type. So all I've done here is I've just grabbed the file name. I'm uploading it to that same bucket that it came from. And again... The NCA Toolkit and Mini.io, I do cover the installation on and walk through a demos in a lot more depth on this. So I'm not going to go through all the credentials and stuff. But if you've used this and tried to upload videos from this to YouTube, you'll understand the issues. So yeah, we take this, we take the file name and we just re-upload it and override that initial file. Alright, so that's overrid it now with the correct file type. Then we download it again. Which is weird. And now this is downloaded correctly. It's seeing it as an MP4 and we can view it. And this is the actual video. So we're not getting that weird file type. And now this can be uploaded to YouTube. So if I click go on this. If I just open this node so you can see what's going on. It's just basic title. It's got a region code here. It's uploading the binary data. Just fill in text there for the description. Privacy status. And this uh, self-declared for kids is, it's the video is not for kids, so it's it's disabled there. Always check there. So that has uploaded. That's currently uploading now. It just took a second to kind of pop in there. Bit strange. 
but that will get processed and that'll automatically be put into a short so that's how you it's, it's a little weird that you've got to do it like that um, I'll probably put something on their github and say is there any way that when these files are produced from the NCA when it's uploaded can it set the correct file type because uh, this would save this whole kind of downloading setting re-uploading downloading again and then sending it to YouTube um, if you've seen the videos that I've done with the automations on the stories and the, the viral videos uh, this is kind of what you need to add at the end to be able to get them videos then to be automatically published to YouTube uh, but yeah that pretty much covers it again this this little workflow here will be in the description uh, hopefully this you learned something from this yeah that just about covers it